It's midnight GMT. Hello, I'm Rahul Tandon and this is Business Matters on the BBC World Service. We're connecting the time zones and today we're live in Silicon Valley and Shanghai. And coming up on the program, a report in the US says the world's largest aircraft maker, Boeing's culture of concealment, led to two crashes involving the 737 MAX. So will that delay its return to the skies? We'll be looking at why YouTube is being accused of breaching the privacy of children and why are some firms cutting your pay if you move away from where you work. That's Business Matters here on the BBC. I'll be joined throughout the program by two guests on opposite sides of the Pacific. We have Alison Van Diggelen, who's based in Silicon Valley. And uh, we're also going to be in Shanghai talking to Andy Jie, who is an independent economist based there. Andy, your day is just starting. And what better way to start it than joining us here on Biz Matters? Yes, indeed, there are whole. Good morning. Well, good morning to you as well. Plenty to come from Andy during the course of the program. But let's start with our top story firstly, because remember those two fatal plane crashes in Indonesia and Ethiopia involving the Boeing 737 MAX aircraft. 346 people, of course, sadly died. Well, now a U.S. investigation has found that that was partly due to the company's unwillingness to share technical details. The planes have been grounded since last March. Andy, When you're a company, no matter how big you are, and you're accused of a culture of concealment, gambling with public safety, it's difficult to come back from that. Yes, I I think so. I think that uh, the consumers uh, will not be willing to go back uh, uh, listening to uh, uh, just uh, the company or the government. I think it's going to be a long, long time. And do you think that because of the coronavirus, you know, we are now, I suppose, living in a very different world, that we may be even less willing to get on a Boeing 737 MAX when when it does, if it does get back into the skies, because many people are not willing to travel anyway. Yeah, I think that the issue is uh, now people have choice, like you mentioned uh, earlier, and uh, uh, the, the demand is not that, uh, that, that strong. So yeah, you, uh, you, you, when you buy a ticket, you know what uh, airplane you are going to be, going to be on. You, you can choose. I think this, uh, the Boeing is uh, in a lot of trouble uh, ahead. It takes a long, many, many years to correct uh, this mistake. Andy, would you get on a plane, a Boeing 737 Max? No, no. I, I think I mean, in China it's very easy. Like uh, you, when you book a ticket, you see that uh, what kind of airplane you're going to be on. So you, 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 you can choose. There are so many flights. So why take the risk? Now, let's see one of the most popular songs on YouTube, Kids App. It's Doodoo Bee's Nursery Songs. Everyone is happy, just like me. Sport of gold, wee, wee, wee. There we go. I'm sure that reminds many of you of your childhoods. But why are we playing that now? Because there is an important legal case in which YouTube is being sued for allegedly breaching the privacy and data rights of under 13s here in the UK. It's being accused of collecting children's data without parental consent. The company has responded by saying that children under the age of 13, well, they should not be using YouTube. Is it a debate, Andy, that you're having in China? You've obviously got WeChat, TikTok there. Oh, yeah, I, I think that uh, <clears throat> it's a struggle. I do uh, think that the parents uh, should, should have responsibility. Do you, are, it's it's very, not easy, though. My kids don't listen to me. Do yours listen to you? Yeah, no. They, they, the issue is that uh, it is very hard to, uh, to uh, supervise. Uh, you know, when the kids, uh, when they watch something, they see something pop up, then they go somewhere else. Uh, you cannot watch them all the time. So I think it's really hard. And the, the, these internet companies, the business model is based on free content and, uh, and selling your data. So uh, without a government regulations, I think it's just a, a unmanageable situation. We, I think the government, the parents, and the companies, the companies need, need to work out a, a, a solution that is uh, uh, you know, helpful. Right now, I think that it's just a, uh, a, 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 a it's a, it's just a, a falling to, into the bottom. Anything goes. I think I'm not sure that's good for kids. Andy, I want to start with you here because there was something in that report that really struck me. Was where one of the guests said the U.S. is not a place where people want to come anymore. 
When you have conversations with people in Shanghai, is that a sense that you get as well? Uh, I think that uh, uh, the U.S. is losing uh, a, a little bit of shine. That that is true. There are still people want to go there. The U.S. has uh, top universities, and uh, people uh, uh, want to send their kids to for edu uh, for education there. That that is still true. But I think that uh, the economic opportunities are not. Uh, As good as before, and、uh, the economic opportunities elsewhere are getting better. So they, 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 there's this、uh, rebalancing、uh, going on. The U.S. real wage has been stagnant for decades, for four decades. That's partly the reason that the, the, for the backlash against immigration. So I, I, they, they, and it, it will continue. I don't see、uh, the situation in the U.S. will improve the, the, this、uh, harmonious environment about uh, uh, immig immig immigrants. Will remain, so I think、uh, people don't feel welcome anymore. Andy, you mentioned before there about students wanting to go to the US. You know, when I'm in India, less and less students want to go to the US now than they did previously because they say there are good opportunities in India. China obviously has an economy that's far more developed than India's. Do you also think that some of the president's rhetoric about coronavirus, the words that he's used? To describe China, there will put some Chinese students from going there. Oh yeah, I think that、uh, the the issue in China is that、uh, you when you have to decide very early on if you want to go abroad for college education. Yeah,、uh, it's like in primary school.、Uh, really? If you are you when studying pre,、uh, in primary school, you have to decide if you want to、uh, compete in the local college entrance examination or you want to go live uh, for uh, abroad for. Uh, so I think that、uh, for a lot of people, parents have chosen to、uh, put their kids on the international path, and usually the preferred、uh, destination is the United States. So now a lot of people are trying to say to、uh, say maybe、uh, the UK or Australia,、uh, but but still the US has a lot more、uh, top universities than anywhere else. So this potential demand. Uh, in China, from China is is there? You, uh, it's uh, like you cannot just switch midway and say we we want to go to a, a Chinese university. It, it, it doesn't happen uh, uh, that way. Chinese system is very very rigid. Now many companies are allowing employees to work from home. If you were to come into the BBC's head office here in London, it's far more sparsely populated than it normally is. And why stay in the city when maybe you could? Work on a beach or be high up on a mountain. Barbados recently offered visas for people to work from the Caribbean island for twelve months.、Uh, you know, I think we really should be having this program coming from a beach in Barbados rather than from here <laughs> inside. <laughs> Andy, I've got to say, I think I work much better in a, on a beach than I do inside a, <laughs> inside an office. In China, have we seen because your, the economy's picked up quite quickly? You know, are there less people working from home now? Have we seen people say, "I'm going to move out of Shanghai and maybe move somewhere else"? Uh, I think that uh, in China, people are、uh, getting back、uh, into office again. So I think that opportunity is pretty much gone. No chance then. No chance for those Chinese to join us on the beaches wherever they are in in China or in Barbados or anywhere else. Do you think, Andy, that actually? You know, working from home is as efficient as working in an office. Well, it's not my personal opinion that I don't think so. I think that the organization exists because people need to,、uh, to need to be together, and the virtual experience is not the same. I think that there, there are certainly some jobs that can be done remotely, but、uh, I think the、uh, there are companies competitive because of corporate culture. It's not. A, it's a, a, otherwise anybody can do the same thing. Uh, Apple is Apple because、uh, there are a lot of people who work together, and、uh, they are special people. So I, I think the remote、uh, remote working、uh, uh, probably is not sustainable in the long run for most big companies. Anyway, that's it for this edition. Andy, me, and we'll be back from Barbados for our next edition.